Okay. Toilets. Let's maybe go all the way. Stay five. Oh shit. Uh, it's raining pretty heavy. It is the wet season. We got pretty lucky until now. It didn't rain. Uh, it's rained all night. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. Oh no. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> ah! Wow. <laughs> oh my god. So this is what the uh the, what the wet season looks like. There we go guys. Opening this episode with confirmation that the wet season is indeed wet. What does that notice say? Ah, nothing about flash flooding. Huh? It's gone real high. I uh, I didn't film it last night, but this this river here has come up a lot overnight, and it's fast flowing. So much rain has fallen overnight, and the camp car park is just there. I was kind of worried like this river was gonna overflow. It's not like far off. It's still raining. Okay, um, for the next few days we are we're driving from here, which is Babinda, just south of Cairns. Started driving from Cairns yesterday. We're driving down through Mission Beach and Townsville all the way to Airlie Beach where we'll be doing the Whit Sundays. So, for the next few days we're just sort of driving, living on the road. I thought it'd be, after a few days we've now lived in the van, it'd be a good chance to show you what life is like on the road. And whilst it's stopped raining here, I'll quickly show you what the campsites are like. Around Australia are loads of campsites like this, where you can pitch a tent or bring your camper van for the night. Some of them are paid, some of them are free, like this one here in Babinda. Oh wow, someone's actually camping in their tent. Hope that hasn't leaked. Wow. Um, so yeah, this one is free. And I'll just show you the facilities quickly. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Most places will come with a barbecue, which is always handy if you want to cook. Obviously you can cook in the van, which I'll show you later, but barbecue is always good. Obviously, right now it's raining, so not so good. But last night we had an awesome barbie right there. It's beautiful. Never felt more Aussie than right now. <laughs> I'm stood in the middle of nowhere, topless with a head torch, cooking a fucking Barbie, mate. <laughs> Check that out. And over here are the toilets and the shower facilities. All of it's for free. So this is the toilets. As you can see, it's pretty basic, but it does the job. And in here, we have the showers. Uh, I'll quickly show you one. Again, very basic, but hey, it does the job. Um, you can actually, you can pay, like, put coins in for a hot shower, but to be honest, it's pretty warm already. Didn't feel the need for hot water, so just had a cold shower, which is fine. So yeah, those are the facilities. And also, they, uh, they do get maintained quite often. So really, like, can't ask for much more for free. Um, but obviously, like I said, not every campsite is free. So we spent some nights where we paid money and charged up the van, which is obviously essential because the van's battery will only, the second battery which runs the fridge, the plugs and everything, that will only last about maybe two, two to full days. So you do need to charge that up every now and then. That's when we pay for a campsite. But yeah, it's raining. So we're gonna drive to Mission Beach and probably just chill out in the van so I'll show you how it all works and why it's so good. Bus was late. I don't care, this is something to say. Heading down to Mission Beach, the rain was like relentless. 
It had been non-stop all night and if anything it was getting even heavier. Up in the tropics of Australia there's a certain time of year when you are absolutely guaranteed rain, like heavy rain. And this is usually around January, February, March. Obviously we were doing the road trip in the middle of February. Your back needs a break and I hope you'll be already home. Anyway, somewhere along this journey we uh, we took a wrong turning. I can't remember was driving at the time. Doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, we took a wrong turning and suddenly we were surrounded by sugar cane. Like literally everywhere we looked, sugar cane. It was kind of like a mid, mid America, small town, agricultural America kind of vibes. Kind of interesting to see it in Australia. I didn't really expect to see that. We were thinking like, should we, should we turn around? Because obviously you're taking the wrong turn. But then Google Maps was like, nope, don't worry about it. Rerouted and just said, keep going. So we were like, okay, no problems. We were we were quite enjoying this drive, um, despite the bad weather. It was interesting. As we were driving along, you know, just looking out the window. Oh, wow, Suddenly, to our left, we see a huge waterfall, like huge. We literally look over and we're like, whoa, what the f just to give you an idea of how fierce the rains can be here, we were just driving along and we found this random waterfall. It's like in full flow. So I'm gonna show you quickly. Oh my God. So usually it wouldn't be flowing through there. Oh my days, look at this torrent of water. Holy shit, man. Woo! That is unreal, mate. Are you going on the bridge? No. <laughs> this was an out of control, raging torrent. It looked like it would probably sweep the bridge away almost at any moment. So obviously we decided to cross the bridge. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Holy shit. This is crazy. <laughs> that is insane! What? Holy shit. This is why I love road trips. Take a wrong turning and then you end up in some random little place like this. <laughs> Turns out that uh, on the other side of this bridge was a, a little cafe with toilets, which when you're road tripping in a camper van is uh, pretty important. So we stopped off at the cafe and we were just having a look around, use the toilets. And it was whilst we were here that I think it was a park ranger or someone of importance uh, started speaking to us. And he said, we need to turn around and double back on ourselves because further up the roads we were driving along it's already flooded and we kind of need to get out of here pretty quick before it floods the other way and we can't get back so there's so much rain <laughs> not wanting to take any risks of getting swept away we decided to take his advice and turn back the way we came the rain was lashing down non-stop and you could barely hear yourself think over the drone of our window screen wipers. Eventually, we found ourselves at Mission Beach. Uh, as you can tell, it's ridiculously hot. I think this is steaming up a bit. Huh? Um, yeah, we're in Mission Beach. It's very windy, very rainy. Usually this place is supposed to be really beautiful and people stop here for a while. That was the plan. <laughs> we'll go check out the beach and see what's going on. Yeah, it wasn't really a, a beach kind of day. So instead we hunkered down for lunch of watching the waves crash in, all the wind. And at this moment I was like, well, 
Uh, I haven't actually given you guys a tour of the van yet, so this seemed like the opportune moment to do that, just to give you a little taste of what it's like to live on the road. So here, we're in the driver's cab. Standard aircon, we got an aux cable to play the tunes. Automatic, pretty easy to drive. You just have to remember that it's three meters high. Um, so there's certain things you can't park or go under. Uh, what else have we got? Some travel suites. Glove box there, put all your stuff in. Just a very standard driver's cab. And in the back here, we have our little table. Hello. <laughs> Jamie and Alice are just finishing up lunch. That table, actually, you can pack it away because otherwise it kind of gets in the way. And for a windy day like today, pretty perfect. We don't have to sit outside. In the back here, we have a gas cooker, get the kettle on, microwave. You can only really use that when you're hooked up to electricity, and a fridge. In there, keeps it nice and cool. Plug sockets are here, so when you're plugged into the main power at a campsite, you can charge all your stuff. Sink, just flick that on. Running water to wash up. Um, got some camp chairs there, some toaster a table for outside. Obviously, not sitting outside today. Under the seats is a lot of storage that I'll show you later. And that's where we keep all our bags. And in here is where we keep all the kitchen stuff. So at the moment it's, <laughs> it's a little bit messy. <laughs> Everything's in there. And also Barn Travelers gave us all of that. So knives and forks and plates, plastic cups. They sorted us all out with that, which is pretty awesome. So later on, I'll show you what happens when we go to bed? Uh, we have to set all the bedding off here and below as well. So that's pretty fun. So yeah, it's a cozy little thing on wheels. After lunch hunkered down in the van, we decided that we're going to keep on driving to Townville. Yeah, let's do it. Because the weather's a little bit too grim for a day on Mission Beach. It does look like a beautiful area though. I know it's a shame. It was a shame because uh, I've heard so many good things about Mission Beach. Like, literally everyone who'd done the East Coast and was sort of on Instagram saying, what should I do? What should we see? Um, everyone was saying Mission Beach was awesome. Uh, but as you could see, there was there was really no point in us being there that day. Um, and as we learned on this road trip, you can't control the weather and you definitely can't rely on it. After a few hours driving, we found ourselves just outside Townsville. All right, we're now in our next campsite, just north of Townsville. It's still raining, as usual. This whole day has just been very wet. Um, yes, yeah, again the same. We've got a barbecue situation over there, some showers and toilets, another free campsite. What more could you ask for? Despite the shitty weather, we really didn't mind, to be honest. Um, we were, we were enjoying living in the van. It was it had everything that we needed, as you can see. Just been doing a little editing here in the front seat. And in the back, the guys are just starting on dinner prep. So I'll show you what that looks like now. It was just literally a home on wheels. What's on the menu? Paella. Paella. Decent. Putting the, uh, the old gas back on here. So this is really easy. You just have to turn this top green one all the way open. And then this one, just like that. that, done, easy. So hot. <laughs> <laughs> After cooking up dinner and playing some Uno, it was time for bed. Okay, it's a bit bright. Um, it's been a bit of a weird day because of the rain. I keep saying it. Um, yeah, we just did a lot of driving and not much else really. Just one of those days, like. But it's been cozy to stay in our camper van all day. We've had some good food, played cards, wine. Um, got a lot of 
kilometers miles covered um, and now I finally do the last bit of the van tour where I can show you what happens when we set the beds up it's pretty chaotic okay so firstly Jamie and Alice get their bed ready I'm gonna get out of the way So, Jamie and Alice is sorted, looking very cosy back there, and now, the moment you've all been waiting for. And it took us ages. Ta -da -da. These panels just slide out and form a top bunk. Okay, so this is my little sleeping area up here. Got the air vents there, a little breeze. Uh, currently not sleeping with the sleeping bag because it's too hot. It's all right. And then down below me, it's Jamie. Oh no! And Alice. <laughs> There's a few bugs in here. Oh my god! It just went in my mouth. <laughs> oh, it's there! It's massive. Oh. Anyway. Good night, guys. Oh, it's a cockroach. Oh my no, god, it's, it's a cockroach. Not. Yeah, it is. Look, look at that. Is it? Okay. Well, Wait, hang on, keep this going. is not how I intended to end the day. Uh, how am I going to get rid of this? Um, Heal up. Oh, that just went on my mouth. Whoa. Outside he goes. How many more cockroaches are there in I here? I don't know, but cockroaches have wings, so... Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Anyway, night guys. Welcome to some place near Townsville. It is day six. We are having our breakfast on the outdoor camping stuff that all spawn travelers have given us. <sighs> Swear to God, if I say Autobahn Travelers one more time, ugh, it is Travelers Autobahn, okay? Because it stopped raining. It's actually, it's actually sunny awesome. Today we are heading to Townsville just to check out the town and see what's going on. It was sunny. <laughs> it was sunny. It was amazing. After all that rain we were so oh, beautiful. Uh, we headed into Townsville. Townsville isn't really all that popular on the list of things to do on the East Coast. It's just your average run-of-the-mill town. But there were some great views to be had from Castle Hill. Having gotten that great view of the town, we made our way down to the beach. I feel like we're maybe, maybe just, just pushing it a little bit with the beach. I mean, it wasn't raining, um, which was great, but it was still really windy. I couldn't fly my drone. Uh, we tried going in the sea, which was just rough. Despite all that, it was it was nice to hang out in a, in a place that. I wouldn't otherwise have visited, you know. Um, the only reason I was here is because we were on this road trip and it was cool, it was interesting. There were lots of things to do. Uh, at one point we found this cool 
old war, uh, I think it was a war fort or a war museum. It turns out that Townsville had played a key role in World War II. It was basically the main base in Queensland and in all of Northern Australia, acting as a key port and camp for Allied troops carrying out operations in the Pacific War. Hundreds of thousands of troops, supplies and munitions were based here, and it's no surprise that the Japanese often had their eyes on attacking here, which would have cut off that key supply chain to New Guinea. <sighs> A nice, chilled day in Townsville. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like we've all got a little bit burnt. Maybe a little bit burnt. <sighs> we haven't told the van yet, have we? About what we're doing tonight. Oh, I'm sure it's already heard us. The van that we have not named. We still need a name for the van. And we're abandoning the van because we're staying at Alice's long lost best friend's house. Is that right? Yes. What are the chances? Alice had an old friend from primary school. Uh, she literally hadn't seen her since primary school and she was living here in Townsville. And in typical Aussie fashion, straight away she was like, yeah, come over, you can, you can stay over, we'll cook for you, we'll show you around. We were like, that is typical Aussie friendliness. Uh, they're, they're so welcoming. So yeah, we headed over to Jess and Ben's place. Which means we're going to sleep in a proper bed tonight. Yeah! And take your drunk in the pool to cool off Oh, windows. she's a pool? Could yeah. you open some windows? Yeah, sorry. Let's go. Okay. We just arrived at Alice's friends, um, just grabbing stuff out of the van and then we're going to be staying in the normal bed in the house. I kind of feel like I'm cheating and I feel like the van is judging me. I'm sorry, like I actually wanted this whole thing to be, this episode, I wanted it to be about like life on the road and instead we're now staying in a house but hey like with road trips plans they always change it's it's nice to have like a plan which isn't too set in stone like you can make changes to it and Alice messaged her best friend from a long time ago and things worked out so I'm gonna take a free bed tonight I'm gonna lie the van the van can't hear me now um, it was nice to have a proper sit-down meal uh, we had spaghetti bolognese which was just just beautiful. Uh, it's really nice to get to know Jess and Ben. And then after dinner, they were like, yeah, let's go for a drive around Townsville and we'll show you around. So that was awesome. We got a little tour of Townsville. This was really fun because Ben was actually a police officer. So we got this alternative tour of Townsville. Um, he had the kind of knowledge and stories that you simply wouldn't get from a normal tour guide, as you can imagine. And after cruising around the town, we then headed up Mount Stewart where we spotted some more classic Aussie wildlife. Oh, that's so cute, it's got a child. Little wallabies. Do you think that's mom, dad and baby? Can we go pat them? Ah, that's a negative. <laughs> <laughs> Cane toads. <laughs> Cane toads. You may have heard about these, these creatures because oh, they're just horrible. Proper cretins. Apparently if you lick the back of a cane toad, don't ever do that. Uh, you can really hallucinate. I think they've got some sort of poisonous something on the back. Anyway, they're just horrible. Forget about cane toads. Forget we ever saw those things. Pretty ugly. What they actually... Do you yeah, know why they were brought over here? No. So, when the um, Europeans came out for sugar and stuff like that, they brought over these from South America because they're having real problems with bugs. Because I don't know if it's cane toads at the moment, but what they do with sugar cane is they burn it to burn it all back mm -hmm. yeah. and that, that gets rid of all the pests. So normally in burn season you'll see heaps of eagles and stuff flying over because all the snakes will come that's what they eat and it's the same with cane toads. At the top of Mount Stewart was uh, this really nice lookout over the whole city and it was just beautiful so we stayed up there talking for about an hour. I honestly didn't expect anything from Townsville. Um, maybe that is why I enjoyed it in the end. I had no expectations. Uh, everyone kind of just writes it off as uh, it's just another town, but because Jess and Ben were locals and they'd shown us around, um, 
kind of got that inside knowledge that you wouldn't you wouldn't otherwise get so we really enjoyed our time here and that's definitely if you're ever traveling i would highly suggest if you can then meet up with a local make friends with the locals and they will always show you the interesting parts of where they live the places that you won't get to see otherwise Last night I um, posted on my Instagram story asking people if they had a name for the van. We still need to name it. We don't have a name for our van. So, if you have any suggestions for a name for the van, let me know. Message me. Here are some suggestions overnight. The Colombian. It's from my Colombian flatmate Nico. I don't think that really ties in. Sorry, mate. And my mate Dan, she says, Virgin Bog Trotter. Again, don't think that one's gonna work here, sorry. Um, somebody has said, looks like a Dave or a Clement. Perhaps even a Steve. I did think about Steve, possibly to be Steve, but then I feel like she, it's a she. The van is a she, I feel like it's a she. Um, my own sister, she has. What has she said here? Vanessa. It's a she. And then she sent me this list of different van names, all beginning with V. Or girls' names beginning with Van. Vancha, Vandra, Vanessa, Vanji, Vanity, Vanja, Vanora, Vanna, Vanny, Vanessa, Vanellope. The search continues. We will get this van named at the end of this episode. Hold me to it. Every single road trip video, every single film you see about road trip, they always name the vehicle. We'll find a name. For now though, we are up bright and early. We are heading over to a place called Magnetic Island. As you may have just guessed, Magnetic Island is an island. It sits a short 20 minute boat ride off the coast of Townsville. We are starting our day on Magnetic Island by doing the Forts Walk. And we're keeping an eye out for koalas in the trees. Apparently there's loads. And the forts are from World War II when the Americans, I think it was the Americans? The Americans were here keeping an eye on this area because Townsville was like a really important place in World War II. Sure enough, there were loads of koalas. It's another essential part of the Aussie wildlife ticked off this road trip. Stay inside, call it Sit back at the door, way. The forts were also fascinating. Similarly to what we'd learnt in Townsville the previous day, these forts on Magnetic Island were a key part of the infrastructure for Allied soldiers. They would basically be able to come here and have this amazing vantage point they could see across the whole bay and they would know when enemies were on the way. As a history nerd, I love places like this. According to this, they have no idea where the guns actually went. They just disappeared after the war. I don't know how you could lose something so big, but... I just I find it fascinating picturing these people from the past, especially the war generation, stood exactly where we are. It's for me, I, I don't know why, I just I love it. You can see in these clips I'm I'm really enjoying reading all the information on the little boards dotted around the camps. This is uh, my favourite little thing so far. Off juicy beer rations could be drunk at the camp canteen. These wine bottles, stamped 1943, and a long neck beer bottle were discovered in a rocky hiding place near the forts. So they reckon one of these soldiers had a couple of beers whilst he was on duty and hid them. I find that when you're learning about history, it's always the best when you can actually put yourself in the person's shoes. 
So standing in that lockout, listening to old radio recordings really brought it to life. I was surprised at how big these forts were and how much remained of them, to be honest. Over 70 years ago and they're still here, pretty much intact. I really wanted to send my drone off, but as you can probably hear, it was really windy again. Like, so windy. Okay, that was uh, pretty cool. Not what I was expecting when I came to Magnolia Island, a bit of World War II history. Um, but yeah, worth checking out. It's like a living, living history sort of museum where that wind, that wind was so annoying. It continued like that for the rest of the day. We hopped back on the local bus service and headed to another part of the island. We were gonna snorkel today, but the wind has kind of ruined the plans because all the water's kicked up all the sand and stuff, so it's not really visible. Um, so instead, we've just taken directions off the bus driver <laughs> who pointed out this little lookout we should go check out. So that's what we're going to do now. Magnetic Island was, uh, it was weird, it was, it was so small, like you could probably get from one end of the island to the other within half an hour. It was like this really small, secluded neighbourhood, um, quite unique. All of that was emphasised for me when the bus driver actually stopped, like he saw that we were sort of like looking around, didn't know what to do. He stopped the bus again because he'd just done like a loop to head back. He got off the bus and offered us tips on what to do and where to go. That was really nice. He didn't, he didn't have to do that. On his advice, we took our second hike of the day up this small crop of rocks with rewarding views at the top. Although the wind had changed our plans and meant that the closest we got to any tropical fish was a fish tank in a bar, we'd still really enjoyed it. Keep an eye out for snakes along here. Knackered, to the point of exhaustion in the heat, we headed back home to the mainland. That evening, Jess and Ben took us to a local delicacy. Pizza Hut! No, seriously, I'm, I'm not joking. Like, for some reason in the UK, uh, they don't have all you can eat Pizza Huts. Correct me if I'm wrong. But in Australia, they do. There's a select few stores in the country with all you can eat buffet, which is just like pizza. If anybody knows me, pizza, all you can eat, like this was heaven. Uh, we're heading back in the van. We're kind of excited about. Uh, we're doing a big drive down to Ellie Beach, and then tomorrow we'll be starting our Wood Sundays sailing adventure, which I'm so excited about. Now, some of you may have realised that there's a bit of a running theme here with all the Australian wildlife. We saw the wallabies, the koalas, the cane toads. So, before we get properly going to Ellie Beach, we have stopped at Billabong Sanctuary because we didn't see any crocodiles in Daintree Rainforest. So, we're going to see some crocodiles here as well as, yeah, in captivity. Our aim is to give you a wow of the day. Wow. Wow of the day. What's the wow of the day going to be? Did he? He's got actually the camera in there. What did he do? He got I think I think I might have got it on video. <laughs> this place was awesome. Jam-packed full of all the animals. There were koalas, who doesn't love koalas? Birds, all the world's most deadliest snakes, which obviously live in Australia. There were cassowaries, wombats, emus, birds of prey, dingoes 
lizards, and of course, the crocs. Giant 5.2 meter male estuarine crocodile weighing over a thousand kilograms was the largest crocodile in captivity in the Northern Territory. Wow, he's a big boy, hey? I can't believe they've actually trained him to just sit there and not bite the tourists, that's crazy. Hi, mate. I think the, the best part about this place was uh, the interactive shows where you could really get up close to the animals and learn more about them. Okay, they're literally putting themselves at risk of receiving a bite. Now, if those people see, oh, look, there's a snake there, leave it be, guess what? It's, it doesn't want anything to do with you. It's not going to chase you down, okay? It's going to go about its own business, and you'll go about your own business. Again, over 90% of snake bites occur when people are trying to catch or kill them. The crocodile show was by far, by far, the highlight. Remember that sign? Our aim is to give you a wow of the day. This was the wow of the day right here. For an hour, we basically went around from enclosure to enclosure, learning about how these beasts are the perfect killing machines. And that's because these animals are an ambush predator. So right now, he knows exactly where I am. He can feel my vibrations. So all my footsteps, my movements, that's producing sound waves which channel down into the water and the crocodile has uh, some really cool scent of basically pressure receptors, not scent glands. Uh, the pressure receptors in and around the jaw which enable him to feel those vibrations and right now he's making that sort of stealth approach right up to the water's edge. Now again, once he does raise his head up out of the water, he's bringing into play his eyes. Okay, so that popping sound there guys, about two tons of closing pressure. Listen to the snap of those jaws. These creatures are absolute beasts. Okay, the crocodile, a little bit smaller than bully, actually registered a bite force of three and a half thousand PSI. Now three and a half thousand PSI is between two and two and a half tons of closing pressure, and that's sustained. Okay, that's not once off, that is sustained at that bite force. So it is the highest recognised bite force of any animal on the planet. Okay, you definitely don't want to be in the jaws of a crocodile. Did you hear all of that? Like. It was literally like God said one day, he sat down and he was like, uh, I am now going to make the perfect killing machine. The pinnacle of predators. Made it all the more amazing that the experts, I'm sure they are experts, uh, stood so close. I wouldn't want to stand that close. Rather him than me. After the crocs, everything changed. We came across a story. A story that touched us all. Mate, this story is absolute feels. Feels! Basically, if you can't be bothered to press the pause button, like myself, if I, if I was watching, I wouldn't bother to pause and read all of that. Uh, I've got it all written on my phone here, so I'm going to read you the story. Now, Tonka was a very, very special wombat. He was the miniature bulldozer of the bush. Having been rescued from the pouch of his roadkill mother, he was hand reared at the Billabong Sanctuary. So he's an orphan, okay, straight away, feels. He was loved by everyone. Kids would come running up to rub his belly or tickle his toes. Everyone left with smiles on their faces, souvenir photos in their suitcases. Oh, that rhymed. I wonder if they, did they mean, to, did they mean to make that rhyme? I don't know. Anyway, Tonka was famous. Tonka loved everyone so much that when Hurricane Yazzie tore through Queensland in 2011, he actually became depressed. I remember seeing this hurricane on the news. Um, it caused a lot of flooding in Queensland. It was really, really, really bad. So Tonka became depressed because the sanctuary was closed for 10 weeks with no visitors and he stopped eating, he, he lost weight. He became a shadow of his former self. It was only when visitors finally returned that suddenly he began to eat again. They realized that there was nothing wrong with him and basically he had missed the pats and cuddles that everyone had been giving him. The story went viral with Tonka becoming a powerful ambassador, not only for Billamong Sanctuary, but all wildlife conservation. So basically, Tonka is a real, real hero here. This story ended with the news that, sadly, in 2016, Tonka passed away. The final paragraph, the final paragraph on this big story billboard thing that I was reading, it reads, um, while we miss him terribly, 
we like to think that one little wombat made the world a happier place. We were honoured to know him. R.I.P. Tonka. <sighs> feels. So many feels. R.I.P. Tonka. Oh man. For the rest of the day, I couldn't stop thinking about Tonka. I couldn't get it off my mind. Suddenly, it all made sense. I think we need to name the van after Tonka. In memory. The name of the van is Tonka. Yeah, okay. I thought it was a she all this time. I know. But after that feels like story. tonight, Tonka. Um, it's going to be weird sleeping here after two, two nights in a normal bed. <sighs> Past few days of, I'm sure as you've seen, have been pretty, uh, pretty weird. I don't know if weird's the right word, but a lot of stuff we didn't plan. <laughs> uh, the weather kind of went against us um, at some points. I wanted to fly my drone more but weather just didn't allow for it, so these things happen. Um, and actually it's been kind of a good challenge for me to try and make something entertaining which doesn't just rely on beautiful drone shots, so we are now in Early Beach and tomorrow we begin sailing the Whitsundays, which I am so excited about like, just wait till you see this, it's going to be unreal. I'll catch you in the next episode.